Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Algebra 2. Today's topic is quadratic functions. We'll be looking at quadratic functions both algebraically as well as graphically. So let's start with the function y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. In contrast to a quadratic equation, notice that this function has two variables. X is the input or the domain of the function, and Y is the output or the range of the function. So we can select several X inputs and derive the Y outputs in a table. So I'll set up an X column and a Y column. Select some X values and calculate the resulting Y values. These are our inputs and outputs, x values part of the domain, y values part of the range. If we plot these points 0, negative 3, negative 3, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 5, negative 4, 5, and 2, 5. And we can see that these points form a parabola. Okay, so here's our parabola. We want to identify important parts of this curve. First, we'll note the x-intercepts. There are two. Sometimes there are two, sometimes there is one, sometimes there aren't any. We also have a y-intercept. There will always be one and only one y-intercept. We have the vertex which in this parabola, which opens up, is the lowest point. In a parabola opening down, the vertex is the highest point. And one additional characteristic we want to identify is the vertical line which passes through the vertex, which is known as the axis of symmetry. So here, the vertical line passing through the vertex is the axis of symmetry, which will always be a line with the equation x equals and the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now I'd like to make an important point regarding the relationship between a quadratic function and a parabola. All quadratic functions are parabolas, but not all parabolas are quadratic functions. As an example, we can have a parabola opening to the right or a parabola opening to the left and a quick vertical line test shows us that this curve, because we have two intersections with the vertical line, is not a function. So now with our familiarity with the characteristics of quadratic functions, let's look at identifying the vertex relating to the concept known as optimization. Optimization is identifying the vertex, either the minimum or the maximum of a quadratic function. In our example, we're working with the format y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. So if we check that in our example to confirm, the x value of the vertex would be negative b, b is 2, negative 2, over 2a, 2 times 1, which is negative 1, and we can observe that that is the correct x value of the vertex. You can input negative 1 into the function, and the output, the y result, will be the y coordinate of the vertex. In our case, that y value is negative 5. We want to be able to identify the domain and range of the function. Looking at the graph, we can see that the domain is x values such that x is an element of the real numbers with no restrictions. x can be as small or as large as we want it to be in this function. The range, the y values, 
why such that why observing our parabola y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 5 and y is an element of the real numbers. This is the domain, the x values, and the range, the y values, for our function. As I've mentioned, some parabolas, in reference to functions, some parabolas open up, some parabolas open down. It's helpful to know how to identify the direction of the parabola given the equation. So in the function format y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the a is the indicator of the direction of the parabola. When a is greater than 0, as we see in our example, the parabola opens up. If a is less than 0, then the parabola opens down. And a is never 0, because if a were 0, then we would lose that x to the power of 2 term, and we wouldn't have a quadratic function. So now let's summarize the process of getting from a quadratic function to its graph. Number 1, identify the vertex. We found the x value, then we found the y value, so our vertex is negative 1, negative 5. Number two, observe the a value of the function and identify the sign. In our case, the a value is 1. a is greater than 0, so we know that we're going to see an upward opening parabola. Number three, we can identify the y-intercept by inputting x into the function and solving for y. Four, we can identify our x-intercepts, if any. This comes from factoring or from using the quadratic formula. And finally, optionally, if we need to add some shape to the parabola, we can select a couple more points to complete our curve. This concludes quadratic functions, and in our next lesson we're going to consider the evaluation of a quadratic function and a linear function in the same coordinate plane.